or a story. Mm, one far out story. Manjushiri's father is supposedly a turtle. And there's even this story about how the, the turtles, there were a lot of other turtles and they waged war and then Manjushiri, you know, sh shot an arrow and then it killed one uh, a turtle and then uh, the turtle, I think turtle gasp, I guess. So the fire came out from the mouth. The turtle just like um, peed because it was too, too, too much shock, I guess. Um, and then, so the fire, water, and then the arrow's tip is the iron and then arrows at the end, the arrow is the wood, right? So this is how the tzi, you know, sa, you know, I, you know, like ox year, fire dragon, all that supposedly have started. So there's that kind of legend or a story. Again, just keep in mind, just don't be quick in sort of condemning or like looking down at them as some sort of a story because story is important. Story is really, actually, there's nothing that is not a story. If you think about it, human beings are driven by story, isn't it? That's the only language we speak, story. Some of them are very short, some of them are epic, but nevertheless, story. Anyway, that whole turtle episode supposedly have happened in uh, Wu Tai Shan in China, uh, near Beijing, by the way. And um, that's where Manjushiri, supposedly Manjushiri's palace is. And um, so many, many like beautiful uh, stories. Um, one of my favorite is that Manjushiri was sitting there and then he just faced towards Nepal. And then he saw this beautiful, I mean, big ocean. And, um, and then as he looked at the ocean, he saw inside somewhere, you know, in the depth of the ocean, he saw a beautiful lotus. And then he realized that that lotus is actually embodiment of all the Buddha's Ushnisha, the tip of the head. And then the Manjushiri thought, wow, this is so beautiful and nobody's seeing it. How, you know, sad. Let me just exhibit this. So supposedly Manjushiri sent his manifestation or he actually supposedly had gone there and then he drained the ocean. Then the lotus revealed, which is supposedly Swambu Nath, Papa Shinkun. Some of you may have gone there. And then there's, by the way, there's actually a place called Tsoraji, where Manjushiri have supposedly drained. There is still that. You can go there. Yeah. And uh, Manjushiri thought, well, you know, let me design. You know, this, now the lotus has come up. Let me design a surrounding the park, the, I don't know, sort of, you know, the coffee shop, the bookshops, you understand, kind of, you know, the city, by the way. So he designed the city. And in fact, the Nepali, I mean, I think many Nepali, I think uh, documents has this, historically some used to be, Kathmandu is called Manju, Manjupatana, Manju Patana, I think so. Manju Patana, you can, you can probably Google it. Manju Patana. So it's, and he supposedly he sent all these craftspeople, like goldsmith, the silversmith, the painter, the carver. So this is why that the descendant of this artist, because of that, till today, supposedly, that Nepali, you know, Nevadis are very artistic, so on and so forth. But anyway, <clears throat> the story actually is really beautiful. Um, and there's, a, there's actually a twist in this story. Um, anyway, as he was busy building the story, I'm, I'm putting some color in this, okay? Um, 
the source of the water was still gushing out. You know that he drained the water. So he thought, oh, okay, this is not good. I'm going to, I need to do something about this. I need to completely stop this. So he really tried to just basically seal the, the, the water source. And then suddenly the water source and it, you know, arised as the, well, Kali, Dakini, Vajrayogini, however you want to put it. And the source, the, the water source is actually her secret place. So it's like, you know, what are you doing? You're not trying to block me? Like, <laughs> you understand? You know, you, how dare you? So she was so furious, supposedly. And then Manjushri realized this is the mighty, you know, Vajrayogini. So Manjushri supposedly had received tantric teachings from her. And the um, story goes on actually much more that um, till, I mean, for a long time, till today, actually, this lady, this yogini, this kali, whatever, this dakini is supposedly the guardian of Nepal, guardian of Kathmandu. That, in fact, <clears throat> she actually always is with the king of Nepal. I mean, in the past we are talking, always advising the king how to reign, how to lead, how to manage the country for a long time. Over sometimes lunch, many times over game, playing dice. So she would be there, the king would be here playing dice and then, you know, basically like a leisure. And one, one king, one of the king felt for her as a woman, you know, she's so beautiful. So he couldn't resist. So he felt a little bit of attraction towards her. And then immediately she said, okay, that's it. I will never come back because now you are seeing me as ordinary. You should never see me like an ordinary. And supposedly the king really begged and begged and, you know, cried and fainted and like asking her to come back. But then she said, no, because sort of the karmic force is uh, finished or damaged or the, transformed. So her coming to lead Nepal is sort of ended, but she then uh, as a consolation, she said, I will always come as a young girl, a very young girl. And till today, as some of you know, there's a, something called Kumari. So by the way, this Kumari, some of, there's a lot of Kumari there, and then many of the Kumari are connected to this Buddhist, Buddhist tradition. I personally, I went to see her. Actually, I was doing something in Nepal, something kind of uh, crucial. So I went, um, and I was, um, I was thinking, you know, I've given a chance to set up an art center also. So for some of these reasons, I went to see her. And it was really so special because as I go, there's, there's, always, there's also a public audience, by the way, if you want to go, you can go and um, this baby girl will be held with her mother or auntie or father, and then they will come walk on the balcony just for a moment and then that's it. That's the public audience. There's so many people waiting. I went, and as I was going, you know how every, 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 you know, always the spiritual, the superstition, the, you know, materialism, they're all connected. So right at the door, there's all this gift shop. You can buy, you can pay little less, you can pay high. The gift for the, Yogini, the Devi, Kumari. And, and the gift consists of a doll also, because she's young after all, right? And then as I was going in, my guide, they were saying, you know, 
Shimpuchi, I hope she will not smile at you because if she smile at you, it's a really bad sign that you, you will live short. Just as I was entering and I'm holding a doll, you know, of course the baby would be happy, right? Luckily, I went there like early in the morning and I was waiting there on the floor and there's all this, you know, like Nepali Pandit, Sanskrit shalokas, beautiful. And actually I was really listening hard and they actually chant many Buddhist chant, like Vajrasattva Mantra. And then came, oh, they put a red cloth with, you know, the Chunjung, the Dharmakara. It's really quite authentic, I have to say. Just a small throne, I was sitting there. And then came the auntie bringing the Kumari. She was in a bad mood, luckily. <laughs> she just woke up. She just woke up and she said, that. and I have to say, I'm sure it's my own, you know, I'm a superstitious person myself. I'm a, I'm a deluded being and I have projections. I have to say, the moment that she sat there, it's just, she's just so special. She just looked at me and then the Sampandit told her, oh, you know, uh, uh, I forgot the Nepali word. Anyway, they told her to bless me, basically. And she, she just did it. She just did um, bless me, put her hand, tiny hand on my head. Uh, um, and um, I touched her head, put it on my head, and that's it. She just left. So special. Anyway, these are just some of the legend, okay? Then there's some many other legends. Okay, probably some, many, many of you have heard this because I've, I think I've told this. Manjushri has supposedly taken oath. Nache, 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 right? Oath, how do you say in Zongha? Nake. Like he has taken oath three times. Those who go to Mount Uthaishan, like Jana uh, Rivotsenga, he will show, show up. He, and he, he told, he cursed himself saying that if I, I don't show up, may my head crack into thousands of pieces. So he, no matter what, I will show. Whether you will see him or not depends on you. So there's supposedly this text. And this is an ancient legend again. So in Tibet, there was this Lama who was very, very devoted to Manjushri. And he was reading this. And as he read that, he thought, that's it. I'm going to go to Man Uthashan to see Manjushri. Of course, you know, he's going to show up. You know? So those days from Tibet to China, six, seven months walk, terrain, valleys, mountains, all the hardship. Supposedly he arrived there, searched for Manjushri everywhere, no sign. He was a Tibetan Lama, beggar, no, not so much money. So he begged uh, some sort of an inn, you know, like a hotel, like sort of like, I guess, like a low class hotel, almost like a bar also like where, you know, at night some stuff happens there. And he asked the, the owner of the hotel to, uh, if she could park there in the veranda. So she kindly said, yes, you, sh you can. But yeah, days after days searching for Manjushiri, no sign. But every night there's all these girls and then there's all these young boys they were like partying, music, dance, alcohol. And there's this one boy, kind of a little bit arrogant, a little bit like assertive, kind of bossy, always bullying many girls, <laughs> bullying the boys. He noticed that, noticed him. And then 
he himself, this, uh, this boy noticed the Tibetan and the <clears throat> boy reached the Tibetan guy, what are you doing here? <clears throat> the Tibetan guy said, well, all the stories about how he read the text, and, you know, all that story. So the <clears throat> Chinese boy said, you see, you, 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 you Tibetans, you're so stupid. You, you believe in everything that's written in all those scriptures. <clears throat> and you are so superstitious. There's nobody called Manjushiri here. You should go back. Winter is coming soon. You know, it's true. Mount Rutha is very, very high. It's really cold. <clears throat> you should go back. You should not be here. You will die with the hunger and cold. Anyway, sadly, he decided to go back. But then again, one evening, the boy said, okay, if you're going, what route you are taking? And the uh, Tibetan guy said, well, I guess my test will I'll go through Mongolia, back to Tibet. And then the boy said, okay, actually I know somebody in Mongolia, probably they could even help you take, I have a letter, would you take it? Of course, he said, boy, give him a letter to be delivered. He arrives in Mongolia after long, long, many, many months of walking. There in Mongolia, I think it's in Ulan Bator. He searched for this name in the, I forgot the name. It's, it's written by the way, um, name of this guy, supposedly. So he searched everywhere. He couldn't find the address and the person address he couldn't find. Just as he was about to give up, an old lady come and said, what are you doing? And he said, you know, I'm supposed to deliver this. The old lady read the address and said, you know, there's nobody by this name, but there is a pig outskirt of the city. There's a pig really dirty, fat, always eating garbage. Well, there is a pig. So, <clears throat> The Tibetan guy thought, since I'd come to this far, why not? So he went there, opened the letter and showed it to the pig. He, yeah, he saw the pig. And the pig was just staring at the letter. And there was a tear from the pig's eyes and then uh, dropped dead the pig just died suddenly. So that Tibetan went, oh, this is funny. So he read the letter. So in the letter, it begins with something like, oh, Bodhisattva, you know, so, so and so. The, the, you know, your mission to benefit sentient beings in Mongolia is over. Return immediately to Mount Wutai and signed by Manjushri. So that boy happened with the Manjushri.